Hello, my name is Nelson, and this tutorial is going to show you how to add a checkbox on your welcome page that will allow you to turn off or on the background music to your Android game app that you're developing. Now, there's two parts to this tutorial. This is the first part, and uh, on your screen, you're seeing the welcome screen that we have already created. If you've been following my tutorial, this is your welcome screen. This is how it should look like. You have two buttons. And we're going to launch the game so you can hear the background music and the sound effects as well. We're going to hit the launch game button. As you can hear the, back, the background music playing, sound effects. Hit the back arrow and that's the background music and sound effects. Now again, we're going to put a option on this screen. That's a checkbox and if you check it, then it'll, the music will not play and if you uncheck it, the music will play. So let's get started. First we're going to do is uh, launch our Eclipse. As usual everything is closed and we're going to go to the left hand side here to the Project Explorer and we're going to go down and find the project's name. The folder is called Kill Them All Dash Training for the project. We're going to expand that. We're going to go down and we're going to, by the way, we're going to modify three files. The first one is going to be in a, we're going to go down to the REC folder, expand that. Go down to the layout folder, expand that, and we're going to double click on the welcome screen.xml. Now, if you've been following my other tutorials, this will look very familiar. This is our welcome screen that we created, and we did create most of it in this graphical layout page. And we're going to continue on with that by adding the checkbox to this page that controls the background music. So we're going to go to the left hand side here in the work area. In the palette column, we're going to go down to find the checkbox, and here it is. We're going to click and drag it to our welcome screen. We're going to let it go, and there it is. That looks about centered. Now, there's something different that's going on around here that didn't happen with, when we did the buttons. Is one, there was a default text, and it's usually right next to the checkbox, and as you can see, it's missing. It's really not missing. It's, for some reason, the color black is not displayed like it should be. And it has the familiar warning. And if you hover over the warning and you look down at the bottom, you see the hint that says that the name of this text is called checkbox and it should be a string. And we all know what that is. If you've been following my tutorial, that's exactly what happened with the buttons. So with the checkbox selected, we're going to go over to the right hand side to the property boxes. And here are the properties for the checkbox. On the top row is the ID, and here's the name of the uh, checkbox. It's called Checkbox 1. You can uh, write that down somewhere. Or we're going to need that when we start programming the options for turning off the on the uh, background music. Key track where you can go back and look and see where you can find this name. But as you can see in the text, it says Checkbox, but we know it's not showing up. So we're going to go down a little bit until we find the text color, and here it is. And as you can see, there's no color. Something about something. If you click on it, it'll say something that is disabled or something. So we're just going to click delete and we're going to pick a color. We will pick the color like we did before. We're going to use the hexadecimal uh, value, which is the pound key and six numbers, which is here. I know black is all zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Hit enter. And as usual, you'll see the little block with the color black saying this is your color you selected. Now, if we go back to the welcome screen we'll see in the work area we'll see that the checkbox is now it is readable it has the black color so let's go back to the property now we're going to go ahead and make a stream for this name we're going to highlight the third box on the top the text box and we're going to delete this nomenclature here we're going to go over to the end of this to the small box with the three dots in it we're going to click that twice to bring up our resource chooser and as you can see, it shows all our strings that we have created for the game. We have we have to create a new one for this one. So we're going to go down here to the new string button. We're going to click on that. And our familiar create new Android string box showed up. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to write down what we want the value of the string to be. What's going to be shown on the the on the a checkbox? And it's going to be turn background music off and now we're going to name the string and we're going to name it turn all lowercase turn back ground 
underscore music underscore off. So the name of the string is going to be this, and the value is going to be turn background music off. And that's it. That's all we got to do. So we're going to hit enter at this point. And it brings us back to our resource chooser. And as we look into the large box, we see that turn background music off string is available. We make sure it's selected. Hit OK. And there it is. And we look into our work area. We see that the welcome screen does have turn background music on. We're gonna, I'm going to move it over to the left a little bit. There you go. As you can see, it looks centered now. and looks great. We're going to accept the default text, text size. So let me select it. You know, when we select, we have the familiar uh, resizable box. We're going to go to the right-hand side to the property boxes. As we can see, uh, the text has changed. And now, of course, there's a lot more options you can play with, the like text size and face and style. But I'm going to accept the default because it looks good enough for me right now. So basically, that's it. We're done with our, let's go back to our, our display here, our graphical display. It looks great. It looks perfect. So now we're going to go change our other file. We already completely changed this file. Let's go change another file. So the next file we're going to change is the welcome screen Java. We're going to go over to the project explorer here on the left hand side, go into our project and we're going to go find a folder called the SRC folder, which is right here. Expand that. We're going to expand the package in there. And we're going to go all the way down to the bottom of these uh, files. So we find the welcome screen Java. We're going to double click it. So it opens up in our work area. Here we are. I'm going to expand the library file on line three by clicking the plus button. And here we are. Now we're going to start off and the way we're going to control or when the music is played or not is we're going to set a variable. And if we want the music to play, it's going to be a certain value, a value of zero. And if we don't want it to play, we're going to set the value of one. And that's how we're, we're going to control when the music will be played. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to set a global variable. It's going to be public and it's static which means global and it's going to be an integer and we're going to call this checked and we're going to initialize it with the value of zero now this bkgn checked variable i named you can name it whatever you want this is what i name it and i set it for zero because it's going to be zero is going to mean that the music is on it's going to play so whenever this game runs, it's always going to be defaulted to start running. So once we do that, we're going to go down here to this next area. Now, if you remember, if you went to my other tutorial, you know what all this does. This run the welcome screen, which you just saw the XML file. And this launches the two, put the uh, function or the method between the two buttons, the launch the button, game button, and the exit game button. So we're going to create a new variable so we're going to uh, create a whole new variable name right here and we're going to call this one the bkgd music off method of course i name it whatever i want you can too but this is what i decided to name it by putting this here you're basically saying that when this function gets loaded that when it gets to this point just put these methods into memory and this is just another method now it has a, a error because we haven't created the method yet so we're gonna have to make it and we can correct create it right here right after the closing bracket of that method and so we're gonna call this a public method it's gonna be void so it's not gonna return anything and we're gonna name it this is the name and we're gonna name it the same name we had up on top here the same name if not it's not going to be able to find it and open bracket and close bracket and now this is the method and as you can see the error disappeared because now it can find the method that we called it here and it's called the same thing there now this method when it's called into memory it's going to have a it's going to, this is going to recreate a new object from this object called checkbox and it's going to be called checkbox one and we're going to find a view id in the r resource folder the id name checkbox one 
And remember I told you to remember that name? Well, that's the name we're get, that I told you we need to remember because we need to put it right in here, the checkbox one name. And again, we're going to now create a listener for checkbox one. And this is what we want the first option here is set checkbox one, a uh, set on checked change listener here. And then we're going to make this a new listener on check chain listener. And there you go. Actually, this is going to be a closing the bracket. So now. We got the listener created, and now we're going to have to make a method of what's going to happen once the listener is engaged and something changes on the checkbox. And basically, this is just going to check if something changes, it's changed, and if it did change, it's going to register that change and run this method. And this method is going to do. It's going to say if the box is checked right here, then I'm going to use the if statement, like I said, to control what happens. And if the if the box is checked, we're going to say, and I'm going to leave this little statement for myself. Which says the check box is checked. And that's a comment statement, as we all know. And it's saying that if the box is checked now, change this global variable we did on top to one. And then we're going to close this. But we're going to say else also. If it's not checked, then change th this global variable to zero. Now we had to have both of these because uh, I found an error basically. And so if we didn't have both, that would have a problem. We had to have them both. So if it goes in there and it realized that the, the box is checked, then store, change this variable to one. If it, if they, if they check it, then uncheck it right after, then it's going to store it back to zero. So we have some errors in our statement, so we're going to see what's the problem with all of these. We're going to go for this first one up here, and it says public one has on check. There's an issue here. Should it be ed? Misspell word. Let's see. Okay, there is a library that needs to be loaded. It's right here. It's the component button library. So we're going to click that so it can be stored. And that seems to do well right there with this lower part. Let's go back to the top. We see we have two errors here. The change click listener is missing. So I believe it's probably a library found. If the first one is going to tell you just change everything to the on touch or something. But we know this is what we want. We're going to go to the second one. It's going to say import this library file. It's usually the easy one. So we'll click on that. And as you can see, all the errors are corrected but this one. Uh, this is pretty much done with this tutorial, and I'll finish up this tutorial on part two. So thank you for listening, and please uh, move on and find part two of this tutorial on how to turn off and on the background music. Thank you for listening.